Gen AI, the topic, you're looking at it from the other side of the table, which is advances in quantum computing. How do the threat actors harness that? Why is that a concern for you? Well, I think it's a concern because we don't tend to prioritize those things that are important until they become urgent. AI is a perfect example of that, actually, frankly. We've been looking at AI from a very long time lens. You know, we saw the AI winter and then all of a sudden ChatGPT yes. and we've got all this new renewed interest. And I feel like it's similar to what we're experiencing with quantum. So we had the beginning of the hype uh, cycle. You know, we're worried about a quantum winter, but I feel like we should be prepared for that you know, quick accelerated speed up so that we do have our house in order when there is a quantum computer capable of decrypting RSA and making available our secrets. So we need to prepare and this is why I'm concerned. Well, you, your industry colleagues are sort of pretty upbeat, right? They, they see AI as being value additive for their businesses or they're talking about how they've always been competent in AI. Very few of them are saying, the problems we're dealing with could be made worse by AI. That's essentially your concern. Well, I think there are a lot of people that are actually concerned about the growth of AI and what the downsides could be from all different standpoints, from ethical to also, you know, the potential for what does AI mean for cybersecurity? Also from the flip side, like every technology can be good or bad use. Fair enough. But I, I would like us to have a sort of roadmap for quantum readiness so that when there's a quantum computer capable of breaking our current cryptography, that we actually have a plan and that we actually know where our crown jewels are and we're able to protect them. We're here in San Francisco earlier. We were talking with the, the NSA. There's a lot of emphasis on what the Biden administration is doing. Absolutely. Um, but you're actually the vice chair of the European Technical Standards Institute. And I just wondered which jurisdiction you think is actually leading the way in combating cyber threats. That's a brilliant question. And I think, frankly, <laughs> I think, frankly, the thing that's needed is that we work closer together, that we find our friends in this area. And, you know, Do the you Biden recognize cooperation between the United States and Europe? As I think example. it could be better, uh, to be very frank with you. I think it actually needs to improve if we actually want to have any chance of doing well. The Biden administration, with the Quantum Preparedness Act, you know, basically telling federal government that they need to have an inventorization of their cryptographic resources in order to make that transition, that was a great move. But now we need to kind of see it through and, you know, it will hit the vendor landscape for everyone who serves the federal government. And I'm hoping that that trickle down effect will actually be meaningful across the cybersecurity industry. The other topic of conversation is talent. You know, this seems to be an industry where everyone is saying we need more people. Yeah. We're hiring in the thousands. I know that actually for you, education is a big part of that. Yeah. Is there a skills gap in this country or a talent gap? in the United States? I wish there weren't, but there absolutely is. And I Why? Think, Why is that? And I, I think there's two things. First of all, even though there is an availability of certain types of cybersecurity education, we don't see the uptake that we'd like to see. We don't see the demographic diversity that we want to see when we actually have applicants for different positions. And I, and I feel like the depth of technical skills is still where we fall the most short. So I think making it more accessible, you know, having coding practices in high schools, really starting very early with a kind of digital form of education, that's what we need. When you say things like security network architecture or end-to-end -end encryption in the context of a corporate entity, sometimes people's eyes glaze over. I too, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the threats seem to be very serious. Do you recognize corporate America taking that threat seriously? Is there interest and willingness to invest to protect themselves? So it goes back to your previous question as well about literacy in terms of cybersecurity. Do we have enough cybersecurity knowledge and skill set to be able to do this well? And I think corporate America is a perfect example, especially in, at the board level, where that also needs to improve. We need to actually improve because there is a fiduciary duty to make sure that we know enough about cybersecurity, that we ask the right questions of enterprises. And I think here as well, we could be doing a better job. A great example that I always like to point to is the UK uh, National Cybersecurity Center created a lot of advice for boards on specifically which questions do you need to ask in order to know that you're capable of performing that fiduciary duty for cybersecurity skills.